All right. Can you all can you all hear me? Just picking it up. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, with this talk I'm going to be talking about audio on the web using HowlerJS. How, how many of you are have used Howler or are familiar with it? Okay, cool. So only a couple of you. Um, so yeah, the goal here will be number one to sort of go over um, what audio looks like on the web, sort of the state of audio. Um, and then we're going to go into some code with Howler specifically, how you can use the Howler library um, to implement audio into your, your web, desktop, or mobile applications uh, using JavaScript with a simple uh, standardized API. Okay, so uh, yeah, again, my name's uh, James, and I'm the author of HowlerJS. I'm also the founder of Goldfire Studios, which is an, an indie game studio uh, here in Oklahoma City. So we're just just a block that way, and uh, we uh, our, our focus is on building massively multiplayer online games using web technologies. So uh, JavaScript, WebGL, Node.js, things like that. Okay, so um, yeah, the first thing is that audio in the browser is is somewhat of a challenge. Um, for those of you that haven't used Taller, have you have any of you tried audio at all with the the native APIs? Okay, a couple of you. So you may have run into some of these issues, um, but so I just wanted to, to outline a couple things. So and and I will point out. So Howler is now. Uh, about six or seven years old, and so when Howler first was released, all of these issues were uh, a lot more prevalent, but they do all still apply today. So the first one is fragmented support. This is the one that's really improved the most. So when Howler was first released, um, well, I guess I'll backtrack. There's, there's HTML5 audio and there's web audio. So those are your two APIs. Um, I'm going to go over both of those and, and sort of what the differences are. Um, but um, when Howler was first released, web audio was, was fairly new, and uh, it, it presents a lot of additional features and, and functionality that you might want. Um, but uh, basically the, the initial idea for Howler was to default to web audio and fall back to HTML5 audio. Um, all of the sort of modern browsers today fully support web audio, um, but if sadly you still need to support Internet Explorer, then you don't have web audio. Um, and so that's where Howler's gonna help you on that front. Um, codec support is another aspect um, that you wanna think about. So again, this is an area that's improved, but if you want full um, browser support, then um, you'll actually need two uh, audio files for each of your, your sounds. So uh, my recommendation is, is WebM and MP3, um, but uh, you'll need at least two to cover all of the different uh, browsers. And, and so I already mentioned HTML5 audio and web audio. Uh, as we'll see, there are different use cases for both of those. And so uh, what Howler does is, is let you choose between them if you want. So if you have specific use cases. Uh, otherwise, it's going to default to web audio and fall back to HTML5 audio. Um, another big thing is with mobile. Um, so this is probably the other one that's improved the most. Um, audio in mobile browsers was was pretty much not usable uh, five or six years ago. Today, it's significantly better, especially with web audio. It, the web audio support's actually really good now. <clears throat> um, with HTML5 audio, it's, it's gotten a lot better. So for example, when Howler was first released, um, if you wanted to play audio through HTML5 audio on your iPhone, it would actually open the sound file in the iTunes app. Uh, it, couldn't, it couldn't actually play it in the, the browser at all. Um, so that was problematic. Um, it's much better than that now, but there's still a lot of differences between the different mobile browsers, especially between versions of Android. And uh, so Howler is, is doing a lot of things behind the scenes to sort of smooth all of that out. Um, the other big thing is autoplay. So this also used to be a, uh, a mobile only situation where you needed user interaction before you could play any audio files. Uh, now the desktop browsers have started doing the same thing. Unfortunately, they're all doing it differently. So they don't do it the same way as mobile, and between the desktop browsers, they also do it differently. So uh, Chrome is, is probably the worst offender 
um, with this because it, they use some sort of magic algorithm that determines if a certain page can autoplay audio or not. And there's no way to detect this through code. There's no way to know if your audio is playing or not. Uh, so Howler does some things to help with that. Uh, we're still waiting for uh, the spec to update to help with those things though. Okay, so first, uh, we are gonna do some live code, but first I wanted to just go over some of the, the basic API differences with the native APIs versus Howler, just to give an idea. Um, so this, this is a super basic, um, just sample using the HTML5 audio API. Um, basically what we're doing here is we create a new audio node, and then we set the source, so we load um, our audio file and then we set the volume, and then we play the sound. Um, so really basic, the code is really simple, it's a really nice API for it. There are some limitations though, uh, some of which I've already mentioned. Uh, so limited control compared to web audio. So if you just need basic needs like play, pause, mute, or seek, then HTML5 audio has you covered. But if you wanna do some more advanced things like spatial audio, stereo, filtering, effects, um, different things of that nature, then web audio is going to be more what you want. Um, so cross-browser support, uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, here we're just loading the MP3 file. That's actually not going to work uh, across all browsers. We'll need to load multiple files or we'll need to do detection of which codecs the um, user's browser are supporting and, and load that file. Again, that's something that Howler will do for you automatically. Uh, this is another big one and, and still applies today is the performance aspect. So if you're using this for sound effects, um, for example, needing to sync your audio with um, specific animation timed events or, or things of that nature, HTML5 audio is not a good choice for you. Um, it might work sometimes, but most of the time it's going to be off just a little bit and uh, still poor support on mobile. So again, as I mentioned, this, this is improving a lot, um, but in most cases I would still recommend using web audio on mobile um, just because there's, there's inconsistencies uh, across the different browsers. Okay, so now let's do the same thing with the web audio API. So as you'll notice, there's quite a bit more code here, um, and this is doing the exact same thing. It's, it's loading the sound, it's setting the volume, and it's playing the sound. So let's just go through this. First thing we need to do is set up a, a new audio context, and then we need to create a gain node, which is um, represents your output, so that's effectively your speaker. So you call context.createGain, and then to set the, the volume, you set the gain value on your gain node. Um, in this case, we're just setting it to one and then you need to load your buffer. So uh, one of the big differences between HTML5 audio and web audio is HTML5 audio actually will stream your audio file, so it can start playing pretty quickly. Um, web audio has to load the entire file up front, decode it in the browser, and, and then you can start playback uh, after passing it through you know, whatever nodes for effects and different things that you want. Um, in this case, we just want to load it and play it back. So we've created this load buffer function um, where we're just doing a, uh, an XML HTTP request and we're setting that up with a git. We want an array buffer as the response type. We send that request and uh, when we get that back, we call decode audio data on the context. We pass it the response that gives us a buffer, and then we want to create a buffer source, so we call create buffer source, and then we want to set the buffer that we got back to the buffer of the buffer source. Bear with me. Um, and then once we've got the buffer set to the buffer source, then we connect that buffer source to the gain node, which is connecting it to the speaker, and then after we've done all of that, we can play it by calling start. So, you know, you're looking at the difference there, and you're probably wondering why would I ever use the Web Audio API? It's really complex. Um, 
Yeah, it is, but that's because it's, it's effectively an entire audio engine. I mean, almost something that you would see in like a game engine, for example. There's, there's a whole lot of stuff that you can do with it. Um, it's not really meant for really simple tasks like this, but the nice thing with HowlerJS is that it allows you to uh, leverage the power of web audio in an API that's just as simple as HTML5 audio. So here's a demo with um, HowlerJS actually doing a whole lot more than either of the previous uh, demos. So in this one, we're setting up a how. So basically, Howler exports a Howler namespace, which is for global control, and it exports a Howl namespace, which is for a group or an individual sound. Um, so this is your sound instance or your Howl, and you give it the source. So as I mentioned, you'd, for, for full browser support, you would need um, two audio files. So in this case, we're loading a WebM and an MP3, um, and then Howler's going to pick the correct one based on uh, which, which browser the user is on. And then we're doing something here where we define a sprite. So um, are all of you familiar with like image sprites with CSS? Okay, so it's basically the same thing. You take your multiple audio files. So in this case, we would have jump, move, and uh, lose. And you merge those into one audio file, and then you can um, play back parts of those. So you only need one HTTP request, and it just sort of simplifies the um, structure of your files and, and whatnot. Um, and in the live code, we'll go over how you actually create one of those files automated as part of your workflow. So we've got that set up. Uh, I went ahead and set up a background music. So we've got another, another how that we're creating here. And we're loading our theme music. And then this time I'm doing something different. I'm setting HTML5 to true. So I had mentioned that one of the differences is that HTML5 audio will actually stream the audio versus loading it all up front. Um, so for background music where we don't need precise timing and we want it to start playing as, as quickly as possible, it's actually better to go ahead and use HTML5 audio. That's one of the, the good use cases uh, for that API. So, um, so we just tell it to use that, we tell it to loop, and then we can call play. So for a sprite, um, <clears throat> we just pass the sprite name, it'll play that back. We could call these any order as many times as we want. Howler's going to handle pooling of all of those sounds and uh, the overlapping and whatnot, and then we play our background music. Right, so, um, so we're doing what the previous two examples did and a bunch more um, with a fairly simple API. Um, so before we get into any more code, I just wanted to go over a couple sort of, well, live demos. Um, oh, I wonder if I'm not actually connected to the Wi-Fi. I should have checked that. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Not sure how this web page loaded. There we go. Okay, let me try this. Okay, so uh, yeah, I just want to show some demos of Howler being sort of used in the wild. These first ones are actually just on the Howler website, so that's just howlerjs.com. Uh, and you can see here, you can get all the code for these. They're all MIT, so you can use these and, and set up whatever you would like with them. Um, and we'll see if the audio will come through on this, but uh, so the first one is just a basic music player. All right, I think you can hear that. So you can skip around. You've got the actually. Let me show the the volume control. There we go. Um, you can change the volume. It, you're able to get the duration, the uh, the progress. You can skip all of the maybe. Um, all of the basic controls that you would expect. Um, Howler doesn't provide UI for you. It's just the, um, basically the core API to do all of the audio playback that you might want to do. Um, and it makes it very easy to hook into events and, and controls to be able to set up whatever interface you would like on top of that. This is a um, live streaming audio demo. Uh, so these are all just live uh, feeds from, I believe, from a site TuneIn. So like, this would be, it'll connect. Yeah, so that's just the live feed of, I don't know if you can hear that, but of CNN. So that's what's on CNN right now. 
um, it's able to just stream through. And so, um, well, we'll go over that in the live code, but basically you use HTML5 audio, it's able to stream not just a static file, but it can stream live audio as well, and, and so there's full support for that in Howler. Um, here is a visualization of audio sprites that we talked about. So um, what you see here on the background is the uh, waveform for the audio file. So it's, it's taken these different audio clips, it's um, packed them into one file, and then it's added uh, empty space between them. And then you can just click on each of these and it will play each individual sound file. So it just lets you see sort of what's happening within an audio sprite. And then this one's a little bit more advanced. This is the spatial audio. I'm not sure if you can hear that. So <laughs> the problem with the spatial audio in this setup is there's no um, stereo setup, but I would encourage checking out this demo with with some headphones. Um, and so, for example, if you stand next to this and, and spin around, you'll hear the audio going around you. Um, there's lightning and, and thunder that's, that's spatially aware, so you'll hear that around you. Um, and so this is um, stuff that you can put you know, into games or, or different applications where you're able to set up a full 3D spatial audio setup where you've got a listener and you've got sounds positioned within the world. Um, and it's all really simple to do uh, with the API. Okay. Um, so this is Melon.js. So this is a 2D game framework. Um, and they've actually pulled Howler in um, as their audio engine. So if you're already using Howler and you want to make games, Melon.js makes that really, really easy. Um, so this one is a musical notation uh, sort of learning tool. And um, this one benefits from the web audio. Let's see if that'll work. So it needs to time the note specifically to the visualization. And so it's able to do that precisely because of uh, the precision playback with web audio. See, there we go. Okay, so this um, was a promotional website for the the Peanuts movie that came out a couple years ago. Um, so this, if it'll load, there we go. So you can hear the background music. Um, so they're playing the background music with HTML5 audio, but then they've also got, um, you probably can't even hear it, but there's little sound effects as you, you click on things. Uh, Snoopy had a little too much for lunch, it looks like. Um, but yeah, so, you know, this one just sort of demonstrates that you can use simple audio playback to take a basic web page, <laughs> let me get off that, um, and make it feel more native by just adding little audio cues um, to the interaction. Uh, and then I think I've got one or two game demos on here. So this is Tank Wars. Um, I don't know if that's gonna work. Okay, it doesn't look like that one's working. Um, don't think this one's working either. So this is this is one of our games at Goldfire Exocraft. Um, here, I'll see if this will work. Maybe. So this one's using our, our full spatial audio, um, custom plugins uh, for uh, for example, we've got scenarios where, ah, there it goes. We've got scenarios where, uh, you'll see these crystals on the screen where hundreds of those are um, animating and playing sound effects at the same time and um, all of that's getting handled through Howler uh, without like blowing out the speakers and things of that nature. Okay. Okay, so those are some live demos. Let's go ahead and put some of this into practice with some code. Um, have any of you used Electron? Yeah, a few of you, okay, so um, I figured I'd do something a little different and, and show this in an Electron app um, because you can use Howler for audio in 
you know, a web application or desktop applications with Electron or even mobile applications using something like uh, Cordova or Ionic. And so I, I'm not going to go over the Electron portion of this because that's sort of out of the scope, but this, this is our, our main.js. It's, I, can you all see that or should I change the theme? Does it need to be bigger? Okay, um, see if I can remember how to do this. Let's see. Hmm. <laughs> That's not helpful. Okay. Oh, you know what? Live coding, live theme changing, slides exciting. Um, here we go. Maybe? No, okay. Um, well, okay. Let me just try and make this bigger. Maybe that'll... Is that helpful at all? Yeah? Okay. Um, okay, so th this is just sort of the boilerplate Electron, um, and I turned it into a tray application. So um, if you want to uh, learn more about that, just download the Electron boilerplate, and it's basically the same code. So the main code here is our, actually let me go ahead and run the application so you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so this gives us uh, just a tray application. So I basically made a little Pomodoro timer uh, with 10 seconds instead of 25 minutes. And uh, it counts down and then it, you get to the end and then you've got your break, right? That's the basic idea. Um, but it needs some sound effects. It's, it's sort of anticlimactic when you get to the end and then you don't even know that your time is up. Um, and then some people like to have a ticking sound, right, as each second goes by. So first thing we're going to do is add a ticking sound, add a complete sound, and then we're gonna add some like effects and different things to that to see some of the different features of Howler. Um, okay, and so our code here, just real basically, um, we've got a click event on the start button which will start our timer. And then, because I'm a game developer, I like to have a loop, which is probably overkill for this application, but that's okay. We're using request animation frame, and then basically we're just reading the amount of time that's left, converting it to minutes and seconds, and setting it inside the HTML. So really simple. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is add Howler. I've already got it installed uh, from NPM here in our, our package JSON. And uh, as I mentioned, Howler will expo export the global namespace, and which is Howler, and the Howl namespace. We just need Howl for this. Okay, so we'll require Howler, and then what we wanna do is set up our audio instance, um, similar to the previous code. So set up audio instance, and we'll call that audio and then a, we create oh, create a new HAL, and all we need here is a source, which we don't have yet, and uh, we are going to define a sprite for our tick sound and our complete sound. Okay, so as I mentioned before, there's, there's actually a tool that lets you automatically create these audio sprites, and it's called Audio Sprite. Um, it's a good name. And uh, you can just install it through NPM, so, you know, NPMI-G Audio Sprite, um, which I already have installed. So here's the command that we're going to use. Make that a little bigger, maybe? Okay. Um, so yeah, what, what we've got here, Audio Sprite, that is not the correct command, okay. Ah, we need to go into our sounds. Okay, so I've actually got these generated already, but uh, we're just going to regenerate them. So we've got a complete that wave and a tick that wave. And so those are our two standalone audio files. We wanna merge them into one. So um, we're going to write audio sprite dash E, which will be our export types. And we want WebM and MP3. And then we tell it to use the Howler format. So it, out of the box, supports the uh, Howler config format. And then um, our output to sounds, and then our input are tick and complete. We run that, it processes, and gives us 
um, as I said, are, are files that were already generated here. Sounds.mp3, sounds.webm, and the one we're really interested in is sounds.json. So um, this gives us the file names here, as well as the sprite um, definition values. So uh, we're not going to do this here, but um, what's really nice with this is you can set up like an npm run script that will um, regenerate all of your sprite files, give you the JSON that you can then feed into your application and, and you're able to automate sort of that workflow as you add new, new sounds. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and add our sources here. So we've got sounds.webm, sounds.mp3, and then we've got our uh, sprite definitions. So the tick sound starts at zero, and then it's got this number here that's got this long, um, you know, value here at the end. Uh, you can actually go ahead and select all of that because um, web audio is, is very precise, like I mentioned, so it can get that precise. Um, so we're zero to that value, and then complete starts at 2,000 and has that duration. Okay, so um, our audio sprite is set up. We can now play these sounds back. Let's go ahead and play our tick. And um, we're just gonna do this real hacky. So uh, we just set the value in the HTML. So let's just compare the HTML, see if it changed. Probably a much better way to do this, but that's okay. Okay. And, uh -oh. If the HTML changes, we will then um, we will then play our tick sound. So all we need to do audio dot play and tick, and then we'll go ahead and play our complete sound as well. So that's just here in our else statement. So again, audio dot play and then complete. So those are the two sprites we set up. This should tick in time with our countdown, and then we should get a complete sound that um, lets us know it's ready for break time. Okay, so let's try this again. Oh, let's see if you can hear that. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe, no. There we go. Time to play Mario. I think that was Mario dying, actually, but <laughs> it's okay. That's usually what happens when I play Mario. Um, okay, yeah, so we've got some basic playback in there. Um, this is a Howler talk, though, so I wanted to add a little more to it. Um, stuff that you probably wouldn't actually want in a Pomodoro timer, but that's okay. Um, so let's see. You may have noticed we had a 2x button on our Pomodoro timer, so we are going to cheat and only work half as long before we get our break. And, oh, not there. And so let's go ahead. I've already got the reference to the speed button, so let's go ahead and set up our event listener. I can't type. Okay. And uh, the first thing we want to do here is change the rate. So that's simple enough, audio.rate2. Uh, one thing I will point out here is that um, if you call any of these modifier functions on, on your HAL group, um, it, it does function as a group, group modifier. Um, so that will change the rate of any currently playing sounds and all future playing sounds. If you just wanted to modify one, so for example, if we just wanted our complete sound to play at 2x, um, the play call will return the ID, and then we would just say audio.rate2, and then we would pass ID as the second parameter. So that goes for, for volume, mute, seek, anything um, that you modify your sound with. But in this case, we're just going to have our rate apply to everything. And uh, let's see, I'm probably going to mistype this, so let me just grab the other piece oh, somewhere. Um, yes. 
Okay. And then the other aspect here, we want to go ahead and read our rate. So uh, just to modify our, our actual ticking. And to do that, we just call audio.rate. So this works in the same way. Um, if you wanted to get the rate of a specific sound playback, you would pass in um, the ID to get that. Okay, so let's give that a try and see if that's working. And again, could you all hear the ticking before or just the, okay. Okay, so we'll see if you can tell the difference here. Okay, so it's actually pitched up. It's ticking faster. And that goes faster as well. Um, so yeah, it's really simple. Uh, rate, it, rate was actually something that was really difficult to implement because you've got to keep track of all of the different timing events and, and keep all of that synced up. So if you're doing that manually, um, it can turn into a pretty big chore. But um, if you use Howler, it just abstracts all of that away and, and you don't really have to think about it anymore. Um, okay, so we've got rate in there. Let's go ahead and test out. This one, I'm sure you're not going to be able to tell the difference, but we'll do it anyway. Um, we'll test out the stereo functionality. So I showed the demo with the um, 3D spatial audio, um, but if you just want your audio going left to right, there's also a stereo API that's uh, a little, little easier on the CPU and, and a little more straightforward. And so we're just going to do our ticking so that it goes left and right. And uh, actually, we are going to go ahead and use the ID from our playback. And, and then we will just say audio.stereo. Uh, so we'll point out this, this relies on web audio, so it won't work on like Internet Explorer, for example. Um, and it uses the spatial audio plugin, which is bundled with Howler by default. Um, okay, so then what we want to do is just seconds modulus two, and then we'll go left to right, and we'll pass the ID so that it only affects that one tick sound. And we will see what this sounds like. Maybe, you'll have to take my word for it. It's, I can hear it, it's going left and right up here, but. <laughs> So that's not left and right because, um, again, we, we specified the ID, so the stereo output was not being applied um, to any other sound other than what we set it to here. Um, okay, so one other thing I wanted to show, or one of two other things, let me grab the, the URL here. Um, I wanted to show how the, whoop, how the uh, live audio works. Um, and so let's say for some reason you wanted to have a, um, a live stream of CNN on your five minute Pomodoro break. Um, let's go ahead and set that up. So I've got this tune in stream um, that we used in the other demo. And, and all we need to do is set HTML5 to true. Again, HTML5 is what gives you the streaming functionality. So once you set that, um, Howler's going to be able to pick up automatically that this is a stream. And then we're just going to play it. Uh, I'm gonna do two things with this actually. We're going to play it at the end. So all we need to do is live audio.play and now we've got live streaming radio. Um, but we don't want it to just play forever, so we're also going to use Howler's fade functionality. Um, and two things we want to do here. So first, first we'll wait for it to start playing. Um, so when you call play, if it hasn't been preloaded already, um, it's going to load that file. And obviously with a live streaming audio, it, it can't preload it. Um, so as soon as you start playing, it's going to go out, get that stream begin playback, so there could be a second or two delay. So we will wait for the play event. And here we're using once, uh, so Howler has sort of a, a familiar uh, venting system, so you can use on or once. Obviously once will clear itself once it's called. And once that happens, 
We will wait five seconds. And then we will fade out the playback. And so that's also built in. So you just will fade from volume of one to zero over two seconds. And then one other aspect of this is that um, fading is just affecting the volume. Um, so once you, you know, if you fade it to zero, it's still actually going to be playing in the background uh, unless you stop it. So what we'll go ahead and do here is use another event. And, and I will point out that every command you do, whether it's a mute or a volume change or a seek or a fade, they all have events with them. So you can hook into all of that um, with your UI or, or other functions and, and handle whatever you need. And so once we have faded, we'll go ahead and just stop that playback. All right. So let's try that. One more Mario. Okay. And maybe. Okay. I can't believe it. We've got a commercial. That Gerald <laughs> is presenting the quarterly budget report with. Okay. Budget report faded out over two seconds and it stopped. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, some basic demos. Um, you know, with, with just a couple lines of code, really, really simple API. We've been able to add actually a lot of fairly advanced functionality. We, you know, we started with some basic playback and adding in stereo and, and fading and uh, rate changes. Uh, we're all really simple, just function calls. Um, and then there's, there's more available than that as well. Um, it's all documented on, on the Haller uh, website and, and GitHub repo. Uh, but real quick before wrapping up, I just wanted to go over um, sort of some of um, what what I'm looking at for the future of, of Howler, whether that be later in Howler 2 or, or maybe a Howler 3. Um, and it really all revolves around the fact that uh, web audio is just a really, really powerful API. Um, I don't know if any of you have looked at the web audio spec. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It's... Uh, it's rather massive and dense, but um, if you do just glance at it, it'll give you an idea of just how extensive it is. There's, there's so many um, things that you can do with it, and um, Howler is still just touching sort of a, a very small portion of that. And so what I see really for the future of Howler is really expanding upon that and, and giving simple access to a lot more of the audio functionality that's available in browsers today. And so the approach to doing that is, is through plugins. So Howler 2 um, introduced the idea of plugins to Howler, um, but it's, it's still fairly limited. Um, so the spatial audio plugin is bundled with Howler. There's a couple community plugins as well, but it's, it's not extremely straightforward at this point. So that's sort of the ongoing effort right now is to um, update how the plugin system works and, uh, and and bring a lot more of that that functionality into the ecosystem of it um, so just some ideas on a plugin front um, things that we could see and things that the community has been sort of starting to work on um, things like more advanced spatial audio so the spatial audio in Howler right now is is actually really nice we've got it in uh, you know a bunch of different games are using the spatial audio and other types of uh, web experiments. There's there's several really cool um, Google web experiments that are using the spatial audio for different things. And uh, but but there's a whole lot more that you can do with it um, that that's not within the plugin yet. So uh, areas with that uh, a big area is filters and effects. So there's a couple community plugins for that right now, but there's. There's all sorts of things you can do with filters and effects on audio um, to do really interesting things. Um, audio generation can actually be done with the Web Audio API. Uh, so that's a really interesting area to expand upon as well. Uh, advanced crossfading, uh, visualizations. You can actually take the data um, from the audio. You can read that through the Web Audio API and then create all sorts of interesting visualizations. Um, the, the list goes on and on. Like I said, if if you look at the, the web audio um, spec, 
Uh, there's just, there's really an incredible amount of functionality in there that I, I think is being very minimally used at this point just because the API is so dense and, and complex just to um, get sort of simple playback functioning. Okay, so um, I will try and have the code from the demo as well as these slides up on my GitHub, hopefully later today, which is at Goldfire. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Goldfire Studios and I'll tweet out the link to that once I get it posted. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has anything, but otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, listening to the talk. Have any questions? Right. Um, so yeah, if you want to find out more about the library, you can just check it out at hallerjs.com, and it's on GitHub and NPM as well. So, thanks.